I really wanted to improve the ergonomic setup of my desk. After looking at some monitor risers online, I really didn't want to break the bank, so I decided to make the riser myself. If you guys have been following my channel, I had some leftover red cedar from my epoxy desk build. I'm going to link the project above if you guys are interested. As you can see, I don't really have many tools in my disposal, but part of the fun is really creating a piece of furniture that I like and that I'll enjoy using. The goal is to get the monitorizer about 10 inches in depth. The slab overall is pretty long, it's about 62 inches. But I'm planning on using about 45 inches to make the monitorizer. The rest of the wood I'm going to use to make the sliding shelf. For those of you who are new to woodworking like myself, prepping the slab could be quite cumbersome. Unfortunately, my slab came with a lot of bark inclusions which I cleaned up with a chisel and a ward brush. I think a majority of woodworkers recommend removing the bark from live edges. By removing the bark, this would ensure that the epoxy pore can penetrate and bond effectively with the wood. I didn't end up sealing the grain with epoxy for this project, but I did do that for my last river table. I don't think you could go wrong with either or. I've seen a lot of YouTube woodworkers with mixed opinions. Let me know what you guys think. I then made a mold out of 3 quarter inch melamine for my deep pour epoxy. Melamine can be quite expensive, but I had this left over from my last project. If you guys have any future projects in mind, I think you guys can have multiple uses out of one board, as long as you guys don't make the same mistake I made, which you'll see later in the video. I used super clear epoxy for my deep pour, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. I also introduced a black pigment. I was pretty sure that the wood was very porous from the start, but also because of all the inclusions I had to do multiple pours to get the epoxy level with the slab. Something that I didn't end up recording, there are typically a lot of bubbles after you do a deep pour. I use a heat gun to remove those bubbles. Other than the part where you're pouring the epoxy, I think one of the more satisfying parts of this project is removing the slab and knowing that you got it right the first time. In my case, the epoxy cured too well and the wood anchor ended up getting stuck as you guys can see. This is the part where I messed up. I decided I could get away with not using Tyvek tape or any mold rings. Boy was I wrong. For the extra $18 I saved not buying the Tyvek tape, this was definitely not worth it. I didn't want to bore you guys, but I spent multiple hours over the next few days planing down the slab and removing the melamine that was attached.
I sanded down the surface of the monitor stand starting at 60 grit, then progressing up to 80, then 120, 150, 180, and ending at 220. You know those adjustable table legs that you could get on Amazon? I ended up buying a few of those, but I never used them. I made the table legs myself. I cut out four red cedar blocks for my table legs. These blocks were a lot thicker than your traditional monitor stand legs. This actually made it easier to put in pocket holes later on in my project. I ended up rounding over the edges of the monitor legs with a round over bit. This gave the legs a slightly softer and smoother look, but I later on realized that I messed up again. I rounded over both edges top and bottom, and as we know, there should be a 90 degree contact between the wood surface of the monitor stand and the table leg. Unfortunately, I don't have a table saw, so I had to use a circular saw to trim off each edge of all four blocks. I then clamped each of the blocks down to resurface them as evenly as possible. I wanted to give my monitor stand a rounded corner, so I used a circular item to trace a radius. I then trimmed away at the material using a trim router and cleaned off the edge with a orbital sander. For my finished, I used Rubio Monaco. For those of you who don't know, this is a hard wax oil finish. I've used this product many times in my previous projects. I used their two part mix with the accelerator and the drying time is typically 12 to 24 hours. The cure time is about one week. For this product, a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to apply much to cover a large surface. I would only work with as much surface area as I could complete in 15 minutes. The product reacts in about 5 minutes, but it starts setting up in about 15 minutes. I typically find using oil finishes a lot easier than applying epoxy finishes, but what do you guys think? So you may have noticed that I've been backtracking at this point. I already placed the finishing oil on the wood, but I wanted to hide the drawer slides from plain view, so I ended up cutting a few recesses into the sliding drawer pieces. After dry fitting the pieces together, I made sure that it looked nice and I then put the pieces together using a pocket hole jig and self tapping screws.
No. No. I bought some oak dowels from the local hardware store and I used them to cover up the pocket holes. I think the contrast between the oak and the red cedar gave the monitor stand a very aesthetically pleasing contrast. Before I wrap up, I just wanted to say, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. This really helps support the channel, and I look forward to creating more content like this down the future.